Then there's Malik Willis, 86th overall, a guy that we compared to Steve McNair in the run-up to the draft, and I guess it's fitting then that the Titans pounce. Now, John Robinson, the GM of the Titans, said they didn't consult with Ryan Tannehill before they made the pick, and I don't know where the line is from an etiquette standpoint that you need to pick up the phone and call the starting quarterback and say we're picking a quarterback. 86 is getting close to it, if not on the other side of it, but when the guy you're taking is the guy that was regarded as the top quarterback prospect right. and betting favorite to be the first quarterback off the board, you, it sends a stronger message than, you know, for example, when the Patriots go with Bailey Zappa in Agre- round 14. Right. right. That, around four, round 14. 14. Not 14 this round is what you're saying. Round this? four. That, <laughs> that would be the draft would still be happening today. But round four, uh, not the same vibe as Malik Willis in round three. Yeah. And it raises real questions about what the Titans are thinking. And look, Tannehill's not at the offseason program. The Titans showed us last week that that they're, they're not going to pay a guy a penny more than they want to. And they'll trade him if they have to. They'll move on from him if they choose to rather than than overpay for what they think a guy's worth. And now Malik Willis is there. And and the name, not not the draft slot. But uh, you're the right. Name, you're right creates a presumption that he's not just there to back up Ryan Tannehill. I remember when Ryan Tannehill came in as the backup to Marcus Mariota, and he wasn't just there to back up Marcus Mariota. So their recent history, coupled with the fact that Malik Willis was regarded as the top guy, you throw it all together, you look at Tannehill's circumstance, and you can't help but wonder whether or not they're going to deliberately be handing the baton or ripping the baton out of Tannehill's hands and giving it to Willis at some point in the next couple of years. Yeah, uh, well, see, this is to me part of like you're, we're explaining this is part of the reason of the fall, right? This is more evidence to explain why it happens because it is Malik Willis. There is a name. Some of these teams out there that might go, oh, wait, we got a middle of the road quarter, right? They don't want to deal with that. They might go, oh, damn, I. You know, we like we like Malik Willis, but damn, we take him on our team, and now you know what Mike Florio said. We got a media thing, and the name was supposed to be first rounder, and all of a sudden we got a little bit of a quarterback controversy in our locker room, even though he's the end of the second round, third round pick. Yeah, they're going to be flirting with that in Tennessee. There's no question about it. I mean, again, in the national media, Ryan Tannehill's last game is the only game anybody's ever remembered now over the last three years. That's that's it. Forget all the good football he's played. That last game is truly like put a bullseye on him. And then you add a guy like Malik Willis to the conversation. Yeah, I think it can make things a little dicey down there. Tannehill throws interceptions in the preseason, early in the season, whatever else. People are going to clamor for Malik Willis. He's got that type of talent, but he's raw. You got to wait a little bit. It's a good spot for him. It really is. He's got a lot of similar, you know, traits to a Ryan Tannehill. Sit back there. Push the ball down the field. Oh, it's not there. I can run and make something happen or move and make something happen. And, you know, I think uh, and with that with their running game and how Vrabel wants to play, it makes sense for Malik Willis and t- the Tennessee Titans to match up. For 362 days of the year, I pay no attention to anything that anyone else says about football. I'll, I'll pay attention to things I see on Twitter. I'll pay attention to things I see written. But I don't hear watch much of anything i don't for for one very important reason i never want to be credibly accused of stealing someone else's opinions or bits i want to come up with my own opinions i don't want to be taking anyone else's ideas but during the draft weekend it's unavoidable that you're going to hear takes from different people and different voices at different networks sure and i'm not going to name names i don't want to but but there's there there's a lot of stuff that i see on draft weekend that is team talking points that just kind of end up trickling through the mouths of of the people who are talking into microphones. And they're obviously team talking points, Yeah, but, but just goofy stuff like naive stuff, like, Oh, Ryan Tannehill is going to be a great mentor to Malik. Well, he is (laughs) guys coming to take his job. Yeah. I mean, look, look, this is in high school where we've got some great tradition that we're trying to pass from one generation to the next. This is dog eat dog cutthroat. And now they have brought in the guy that Ryan Tannehill needs to look at and say, he's here to take my job. He's here to take money out of my bank account. He's here to take food out of my kid's mouth. I'm not helping this guy get ready to take over for me. And, you know, look, there's a certain amount of decorum and civility that needs to go into it. And they're teammates, but 
I mean, Ryan Tannehill's not going to bust his ass to groom Malik Willis to take over the starting job. Then what's, what happens to Ryan Tannehill? Yeah, no, I, I hear there's there's a fine line there. You know, again, he's gonna be, he's gonna be a good guy. You know that he'll be a professional. He'll be a good like mentor and role model that way. Malik Willis got a question. Yes. Is he going to tell him every trick of the trade in the world? No. Does every guy do that? No. Does every guy do that? Of course Does, not. I'm sure there. I'm sure there are quarterbacks who, when the new guy shows up, treats that guy like a steaming pile of what came out of the dog this morning. Well, uh, right? Uh, definitely. I'm sure plenty of guys do that. It goes less. It gets less in the NFL because at least guys are a little more secure of themselves. But at the same time, yes. And you're not going to give away every trick of the trade, like. Tom Brady, when Jimmy Garoppolo walked in the door, didn't give him every thought that went through his head as he was walking through the line of scrimmage that, like, took Tom Brady to the next level. Oh, you know, he got this play, but, you know, coach coach told me 10 years ago when this corner on the backside of this play plays like this, I should work it. Is he going to tell those details to, you know, Malik Willis or, or uh, Jimmy Garoppolo? No, I wouldn't if I was a starter. I mean, hey, here's the play. Hey, Bruce Gradkowski, here's the play. I'll teach you some checks. You got a question? Sure. Am I going to tell you every trick while we're competing? Absolutely not. I hope you throw an incompletion and I throw a strike the next time. That's just the way it is. So, yeah, there's going to be some of that. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but but it is a good fit for Malik Willis nonetheless, and it is funny that he ended up in the place with Steve McNair, like you said. One, one thing I'll disagree with you on philosophically is yeah. that the most secure guys are more likely to be helpful. I think they're less. Well, it could to be, be that too. I You're right. The, I think the most right. secure guys are the most insecure guys because one of the reasons they are so secure, one of the things that's driven them to the point where they objectively have security is, is their insecurity. They're incredibly insecure. You're right. And they're constantly competing. I would say and Brady and Rogers and are like that. Right. I never, right. I never want that right. guy. And, and you know, that, that was one of the big distinctions too. I remember when Bill Polian suggested he had a first round grade on Tom Brady along with everyone else. Like, okay, why didn't you take him in round one or two or three or, four, wide receiver or five grade or six Lamar, before number yeah. 199? Yeah, yeah, but but you know Peyton Manning was never threatened by anyone. They never, never. had anybody there. He had he had golf caddies yeah. as his backups. Jim Sorge. But the Patriots, company. the Patriots never hesitated to draft quarterbacks. They were drafting quarterbacks all the time. Right. And it's a, I think Belichick knew that having that presence there is just enough of a little. Red hot poker on Tom Brady, just to remind him that he was that guy once, and what happened? Sure. Sometimes that guy can end up being pretty good. Sometimes that guy gets pretty motivated and works all day long, every day, and does everything we want. And next thing you know, we wake up one day and say, "Hey, he's as good, if not better, than the starter." And I think they liked having that constant yeah, reminder sure. to Tom Brady, so he never got soft. Yeah, I, I agree. Some teams are like that. You know, they brought Brady in the same thing to do what? Do the same damn thing to Drew Budso. Like you, you got a poker right underneath your butt. You better keep going here. I mean, my dad, he had Jeff Hosteller and Jeff Rutledge through the years. That's the philosophy of those teams. They don't roll out the red carpet for the quarterback always that way. They're going to go, wait, Tom Brady gets hurt. We want to have a quarterback so we can go to 11-5 and five still and still get in the playoffs and maybe do that, which they did. Uh, you know, So they do that. But, yes, to your point, it is very real in the fact that, yes, we've seen a lot of good quarterbacks not have good backups, and I think it's because of what you're talking about. We don't want to upset the apple cart. Let's not upset the locker room. Let's let our starter just feel like he's the man and he can puff his chest out and he can play without second-guessing himself or any of that. And I think that is a real dynamic. But, yeah, this is going to be a different one there in Tennessee now because I, I do feel like with the way the tide has turned on Ryan Tannehill a little bit and all the things you mentioned, Malik, Malik Willis, if they get off to a slow start or he throws interceptions or all that, yeah, they're going to have to hear about this a little bit. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.